The pineal gland is a neuroendocrine transducer, secreting melatonin responsible for physiological circadian rhythm control. A new form of biomineralization has been studied in the human pineal gland and consists of small crystals that are less than 20 microns in length. These crystals are responsible for electromechanical, biological transduction mechanism in the pineal gland due to the structure and piezoelectric properties. That's a lot of words to digest, but let's break it down into two meaningful points. The key words here are piezoelectric properties and transducer. The piezoelectric effect occurs when you apply pressure to certain materials and that mechanical stress is changed into an electrical charge. To put it in simple terms, the pineal gland contains calcite crystals made of calcium, carbon, and oxygen, and because of their structure, they express this effect. Like an antenna, the pineal gland has the capacity to become electrically activated and generate electromagnetic fields that can tune into information. That's point number one. In addition, in the same way an antenna pulsates a rhythm or frequency to match the frequency of an incoming signal, the pineal gland receives information carried on invisible electromagnetic fields. Since all frequency carries information, once the antenna connects to the exact signal of the electromagnetic field, there must be a way to convert and descramble that signal into a meaningful message. That's exactly what a transducer does, and that's the second point. A transducer is anything that receives a signal in the form of one type of energy, and converts it into a signal in another form. Take a moment to look around you. The space you are sitting in is filled with TV, radio, and Wi-Fi waves that are all different frequency ranges of invisible electromagnetic energy. You can't see any of them with your eyes, but they're still there. For example, the antenna that picks up a range of frequencies carrying a signal to your TV is transduced into a picture on your TV screen. When you tune into an FM station, you are tuning your antenna to a specific electromagnetic frequency. The information carried in that frequency range is then transduced into a coherent signal, which is the music you hear with your ears. The study I quoted says the pineal gland is a neuroendocrine transducer, capable of receiving and converting signals within the brain. When the pineal gland acts as a transducer, it can pick up frequencies above our three-dimensional space-time, sensory-based reality. Once the pineal gland is activated, it can tune into higher dimensions of this space and time, and like a TV, it can then turn the information carried on those frequencies into vivid imagery and surreal, lucid, transcendental experiences in our mind, including profoundly heightened multisensory visions beyond our vocabulary. For the pineal gland to become activated, some important things must happen. I will address them now. 1. The piezoelectric effect. Critical to creating the piezoelectric effect in the pineal gland are the calcite crystals mentioned above. Remember, these are very tiny crystals, approximately 1 to 20 microns in length. To put this in context, their size can range anywhere from 100th to one quarter the width of a human hair. For the most part they are octahedron, hexahedron, and rhombohedron in shape. The purpose of the breathing technique we do before many meditations is to pull the mind out of the body by liberating potential energy stored as emotions in the lower three energy centers. As we inhale and contract those intrinsic muscles, follow our breath from the perineum all the way up our spine to the top of our head and then hold our breath and squeeze those muscles more. We're increasing intrathecal pressure. This is the internal pressure created when you push up against your insides. For example, when you hold your breath and lift something heavy. The word piezoelectric is derived from the Greek words piezine, which means to squeeze or press, and piezo, which means to push. When you do this, you are pushing cerebrospinal fluid up against the pineal gland, exerting mechanical stress on it. This mechanical stress translates into an electrical charge, and it's this exact action that compresses the stacked crystals in the pineal gland and creates a piezoelectric effect. The crystals of the pineal gland generate an electric charge in response to the stress you're applying. One of the unique characteristics of the piezoelectric effect is that it's reversible, meaning that the materials exhibiting the direct piezoelectric effect, the crystals, also exhibit a converse piezoelectric effect. Once the crystals in the gland are compressed and are creating an electrical charge, the electromagnetic field that is emanating from the pineal gland causes the crystals in it to stretch as the field increases. When the crystals generating the electromagnetic field reach their limit and can stretch no further, they contract and the electromagnetic field reverses direction and moves inward toward the pineal gland. When the electromagnetic field reaches the pineal gland crystals, it compresses them again, producing yet another electromagnetic field. This cycle of expanding and reversing the field perpetuates a pulsating electromagnetic field. 
when we inhale through our nose and at the same time squeeze our intrinsic muscles, we accelerate the cerebrospinal fluid into the brain. As we follow the movement of energy to the top of our head, then hold our breath and squeeze, we are increasing intrathecal pressure. The increased pressure moves the cerebrospinal fluid from the fourth ventricle, through a small canal into the third ventricle. At the same time, fluid traveling around the cerebellum compresses the crystals of the pineal gland. By increasing the intrathecal pressure, you funnel a greater volume of fluid into the chamber of the third ventricle, as well as from the space around the cerebellum. So when you hold your breath and squeeze, this extra volume of fluid exerts pressure from both directions up against the crystals, causing them to compress and create the piezoelectric effect. Now the pineal gland becomes a pulsating antenna, capable of picking up subtler and subtler, faster electromagnetic frequencies. This is the first event that must take place to activate the pineal gland. 2. The pineal gland releases its metabolites. On the surface of the pineal gland are tiny hairs called cilia, Latin for eyelashes. The action of the accelerated fluid moving faster than normal through the chambers of the ventricular system tickles the tiny hairs, which overstimulates the pineal gland. Because the pineal gland is shaped like a phallus, the stimulation produced by the acceleration of fluid moving past it, combined with the electrical activation created by an increase in intrathecal pressure in a closed system, causes the gland to ejaculate some very profound, upgraded metabolites of melatonin into the brain. The tiny cilia of the pineal gland become stimulated as the cerebrospinal fluid accelerates through the ventricular system. 3. Energy is delivered directly to the brain. Much like sending a rocket ship into space, overcoming gravity to get it off the ground is the part that requires the most energy, so to move that energy from our lower centers demands a great deal of intensity and effort. As you know by now, every time you perform the breath, you send charged particles up the spinal column. As these particles increase in velocity and acceleration, they create what's known as an inductance field. This inductance field reverses the flow of two-way information that typically facilitates communication from the brain to the body and the body to the brain. Much like a vacuum, the inductance field draws the energy from those lower centers, energy involved with orgasm, consumption, digestion, fight or flight stress, and control, and delivers it directly to the brain stem in a spiraling motion. As the energy travels up through each vertebra, it passes the nerves that run from the spinal cord to different parts of the body, and some of that energy is then transferred through the peripheral nerves that affect the tissues and organs of the body. The current that runs along these nerve channels activates the body's meridian system, resulting in all the other systems of the body getting more energy. As energy is released from the body to the brain, it passes by each spinal nerve, exiting between each vertebra. The excitation of this system further switches on the peripheral nerves, which then transfer more energy to different tissues and organs in the body. As a result, more energy is delivered throughout the body. Once the energy reaches the brain stem, it must pass through the reticular formation. It's the job of the reticular formation to constantly edit information going from the brain to the body, as well as from the body to the brain. This formation is part of a system called the reticular activating system, which is responsible for levels of wakefulness. For instance, when you wake up from a deep sleep because you hear a sound in your house, it's the ROS that alerts you and arouses you. That's its rudimentary function. However, as the sympathetic nervous system is activated and merges with the parasympathetic nervous system, instead of depleting the body's stored energy, it releases that energy back to the brain. Once this energy reaches the brain stem, the thalamic gate opens like a door and energy moves through the reticular formation to the thalamus, where it relays information to the neocortex. Now the reticular formation is open, and you experience greater levels of awareness. In a sense, you become more conscious and awakened. Think of the thalamus as a big train station with tracks leading to the higher centers of the brain. That's how the brain goes into gamma brainwave patterns. Right between each thalamus located in the midbrain sits the tiny pinecone-shaped pineal gland, facing the back of the brain. As a side note, there are two individual thalami in the midbrain, one on each side, which feed each hemisphere in the neocortex. The pineal gland sits right between them facing the back of the brain. When the energy reaches each thalamic junction, remember the thalamus is like a relay station to all other parts of the brain. These thalami send a message directly to the pineal gland to secrete its metabolites into the brain. The effect is that the thinking neocortex becomes aroused and goes into higher brain wave patterns, like gamma. The nature of those chemical derivatives of melatonin relaxes the body and at the same time awakens the mind. When energy moves from the body to the brain, 
a torus field is created around the body. When the pineal gland becomes activated, a reverse torus field of electromagnetic energy moving in the opposite direction draws energy through the top of the head, into the body, from the unified field. Since energy is frequency, and frequency carries information, the pineal gland transduces that information into vivid imagery. When your pineal gland is awakened, because it is picking up higher frequencies, these higher energies alter the chemistry of melatonin. The higher the frequency, the greater the alteration. It's this translation of information into chemistry that primes you for those transcendental, mystical moments. This is why I like to call the pineal gland an alchemist, because it transmutes melatonin into some very profound, radical neurotransmitters. As higher frequencies and higher states of consciousness interact with the pineal gland, one of the first things to happen is that these frequencies transmute melatonin into chemicals called benzodiazepines. Benzodiazepines are a class of drugs, from which Valium is created, that anesthetize the analytical mind, so all of a sudden the thinking brain relaxes and stops analyzing. According to functional brain scans, benzodiazepines suppress neural activity in the amygdala, the brain's survival center. This limits chemicals that cause you to feel fear, anger, agitation, aggression, sadness, or pain. Now your body feels calm and relaxed, but your mind is awakened. Another chemical created from melatonin produces a class of very powerful antioxidants called pinolines. Pinolines are important because they attack free radicals, which harm your cells and cause aging. These antioxidants are anti-cancer, anti-aging, anti-heart disease, anti-stroke, anti-neurodegenerative, anti-inflammatory, and antimicrobial. That's a perfect formula to upgrade melatonin's normal role as an antioxidant to the role of a supercharged antioxidant that further restores and heals the body to a greater degree than the melatonin molecule normally does. If you take that molecule and tweak it again into a cousin of melatonin, you find the same chemical that makes animals hibernate. When melatonin, which makes us sleepy and dreamy, alters just slightly into this more powerful molecule, it carries a message to extend rest and repair even further. Because the body is no longer the mind, we temporarily lose our interest in the outer world, and because we have no biological drives and aren't distracted with bodily needs, we're able to move more fully into the present moment and go deeply within. If you take that molecule and advance it yet again, you produce the same chemical found in electric eels, a phosphorescent, bioluminescent chemical that amplifies energy in the nervous system. This chemical can be powerful enough to cause a significant shock. Just imagine an electric eel that literally lights up with energy when it gets stimulated. That's what happens in the brain when it gets activated. Not only does this phosphorescent, bioluminescent chemical increase the energy in the brain, but it enhances the imagery the mind internally perceives so that everything looks as though it's made of vivid, surreal, luminescent light. As a result, people have reported experiencing colors they've never seen before, because they exist outside their known experience of the visible light spectrum. These colors appear as profound, otherworldly glowing lights in a technicolor, lucid, opalescent world of suspended beauty. Everything appears as if it's emitting beautiful light made of vivid, radiant energy that you can feel. Alter melatonin one more time and you produce the chemical dimethyltryptamine, one of the most powerful hallucinogenic substances known to man. When ayahuasca or other plant chemicals containing this molecule are ingested, the body receives only DMT. But when the pineal gland is activated, it receives the whole blend of aforementioned chemicals, and this causes some very profound inner experiences. Some of these experiences have been reported to create profound time dilation, where time appears infinite. Time travel, journeys to paranormal realms, visions of complex geometric patterns, encounters with spiritual beings, and other mystical interdimensional realities. Now, because the pineal gland is activated, we can pick up higher frequencies, which in turn produces a change in chemistry. The higher the frequency we pick up, the more it alters our chemistry, which means the more visual, hallucinogenic, and higher energy experiences we have. The crystals in our pineal gland, acting like a cosmic antenna, are the doorway to these higher vibrational realms of light and information.